there. Uh, we'll continue on with project management and look at phases and cycles and processes within project management. Uh, but before we get to that, let's see some of our Gantt charts. I'll scroll over so you guys can see the rest of it. But my Gantt chart, I had it based on um, the other <coughs> chart that we had done. The one that we did with the, I don't know what it's called, but it was the work breakdown structure. I So I took everything off of the work breakdown structure and kind of put it into phases. Mm -hmm. So this the, um, it's broken up over six months or 26 weeks. So the first stage is the opening the storefront, which is the first 13 weeks. And then the second is product creation, which goes up half the second half of the um, 26 weeks. Um, I have the located the rental space taking up um, kind of a bulk of it with four weeks, giving me ample time to find and locate the rental space with a week of kind of entering the rental agreement here. Maxine, how did you determine half a year? Like, did you just determine that at the beginning or did you look at the different steps? I looked at the different steps for how long, because also if you'll notice, um, the hiring and kitchen staff took up the full 13 of mm -hmm. that first, mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that I would have enough time to do a vetting process and do a full kind of work through of, do they have the skills, do they not have the skills, who can I hire, because I want to give, each of these steps gives me ample time to make sure that I have time to do what I need to do. And to train them in the way that they need to be trained. Exactly, and that comes in the second half of the 26 weeks. So then, uh, yeah, we've got the rental agreement, which will only take about a week, setting up the retail equipment, and that's just set up, so I'm assuming that I would have the, um, upon entering the rental agreement, I would have the stuff already ready for the retail space, mm -hmm. cash registers, bank accounts, that type of thing. Okay. Um, developing the presentation would be three weeks because we need to operate through um, the different, um, what, what the store looks like and how to present it well, adding the kitchen equipment, purchasing the kitchen, kitchen equipment, and then making sure to get it put where it needs to be so it won't trip breakers or it won't catch fire. Now developing that presentation, is that something you already have in mind? Like something you will have in mind or like a schematic or of it? Or is it something that you're just saying, you're gonna figure out what works? Figuring out what works to go along sense. with the space. Gotcha. Because the presentation is a big thing of how to set up the bread to be seen easiest, yeah. how how can customers see the most of it in while well being efficient with the space. Yeah. And then for product creation, again, a full 13 weeks. Um, creating a standard menu that would take a full five, kind of understanding um, where we would need to be with that. Um, developing the standard recipes could take about two weeks. Uh, and that's just recipe development, that's not recipe testing, that comes later. Um, with that development of a recipe, is it like you are like you get the machine there, you have the people there, your employees, and now you're just going to start like experimenting to 
So mm-hmm. recipe develop that would be recipe testing okay. with the actual machines that we have. Mm-hmm. Recipe development is getting ideas. I use the example of the blueberry bread a lot. So the blueberry bread or uh, a wheat bread. That's kind of the recipe development of finding what things we would like, mm-hmm. and then on a very small scale, making it and making it figure out. Okay, here's the bake time. Here's the optimal amount of ingredients for it. Okay. Then testing it with the equipment comes here, and once you have everything you know, kind of set and done here, then it would only take about a week to test everything, just with small test batches mm-hmm. to understand how the heat elements work because certain ovens, convection versus convection, they all work differently, elevation works differently, mm-hmm. humidity, it's all different. So and you'll be kind of gauging and clocking how long this thing exactly. takes for each one. Exactly. Okay. Um, recipe testing with customers, mm-hmm. um, take three weeks kind of take, get, taking time to understand, okay, what's doing good, what's not, kind of understanding. Looking at the response of yeah. Taking that one a little bit slower, so that way we're not making a ton of stuff because one customer liked it. Yeah. Um, developing specials. Specials will take a little bit longer because you obviously have the specialty items that need to be ordered and the specialty things that need to be created, mm-hmm. and then obviously making a standard special menu. So if we have a rotating thing of seven, like for seven weeks, we have different specials. Mm-hmm. And then. Obviously so your specials are kind of just run like a program, almost yeah. just for a set amount of time. About a, about a week would be the special. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it would get be changed up for something new. So blueberry bread would be flipped for a special wheat bread or something gotcha. different. Now, will you bring those like back automatically per season? Or are you just going to look to see at the sales of what actually sells? I think it would be um, sales. And then once sales are looked at seasonally, mm-hmm. considering blueberries are very, very expensive in the winter versus in the summer. Okay. Um, you know, wheat breads are easier to make in the winter because there's not as much stuff that needs to go into them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the fruit fruit breads would be more of a summer type thing, more hardier hard breads would be a winter type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the specials would change with the seasons as well. So we have like Christmas specials versus summer specials yeah. versus spring specials. Okay. And then obviously the presentation of the menu. Is anyone else done with their Gantt chart? Got it complete. All right. Continuing on with project management. All right, so who here plans on being a project manager once they graduate? What about my management students? What are the plans for when you finish? What are you going to be managing? What's the plan? What are your thoughts, managers? Yes. I don't know, I'm going to go into HR. All right, we got. HR, why is that? Um, I like dealing with people that I can see like my math or science. Okay. Now, tell me in your mind, how have you begun planning or strategizing to get this position in HR? Uh, I did two internships in it the past two summers. 
Roberts at Food Maker Coffee. And uh, I think I have a pretty good resume. I uh, look good for like entry level recruiters. So you've already prepared your resume? Yeah. Okay. So you've got two internships, you add to the resume. Uh, this is going to give you some credence to your employer to show that you have experience, you've updated your resume and kind of catered it to HR with the hopes of having an effective outcome. Potential. Okay. Is there anything else you think you could have done in the process? If we're thinking of project management, really, this is a time of your life where your kind of school life is your project. This is your project that you're working on. So what could you have done differently to earn a, yield a better result? Think about it for a second. Who else? Managers, what's the plan? Well, what's the plan all together? Madeline, what's your plan to graduate? Honest answer, you say I have a dog work, right? Uh, anyone else? What's the plan? What's the framework here? I want to get into the um, sales part of the company I'm currently working in. All right. They're a manufacturing company. And now, have you planned for that? What have you initialized to get it done? Uh, I've already started meeting with people at the company and kind of understanding what work goes into it, what are the hours, that type of stuff. Um, I've, you know, kind of been schmoozing with the uh, the higher ups and kind of getting my foot in the door. Okay. And the fact that you know someone mm -hmm. helps quite a bit. All right, so communication is key. Meeting with the individuals will hopefully yield some good results. Anyone else? What's the plan? All right, because we're talking about project management. School is a project. When I was doing my MBA at Dominican, um, I also noticed that a lot of people weren't uh, like working, they're just kind of hanging back, just waiting or expecting for the degree to kind of work for them. But at the same time, it's like this is a lot of time, right? Time is being wasted, and time is extremely valuable. So it's like what could be done in the intermediary with the time? How could you be making money? A lot of money going out for financial aid, right? To pay the tuition. Um, what could you be doing to make money now? What could you be doing to generate income as students now? What do you think? I mean, I work at Subway. So. All right, so we said, all right, just have a job. Okay, a job is one. Right, but very conventional. What else could you be doing now? Like investing and stuff. All right, investing how? How could you raise capital? Like a stock. Well, how could you raise capital to invest? Let's say you're just a broke college student. I don't know, like you could have uh, like a side hustle. Like I do like graphic design stuff, make like 50, 60 bucks a day. It, it takes me about like 10, 15 minutes usually, so. All right, so we can say, all right, a side hustle, all right? Well, really the point of me asking this is like, hey, how are you thinking? What is the level of thinking and the sort of your mind state, your mind frame while you're here, right? What is your greatest resource while you are here? Time is, okay, you got time, right? Maybe you live with your parents. But what is actually your greatest resource to potentially make money and be successful even before you get out of here? What do you think? We got our Mark Zuckerbergs, right? Hang around at the dorm at Harvard, drop out, hundred billion dollars later, get your Bill Gates. 
right? People who drop out. Not saying they drop out, but it's also like people who are doing something in, in the meantime, which would be successful. Right? You have yourselves, right? You say, hey, we have human capital. <clears throat> like, what does that have to do with it? Right? You have very intelligent people who know different areas and subjects that you don't know. Right, in one class, we got people who may be experts in marketing, people who are experts in management. We've got an accountant, right, in the back of the room. You may have a finance person who can help sort of uh, look at investing, right, or raising capital. You have people. So really, with this time, you could be working together to start these businesses and making them a reality, right? You may have people who come from a ton of money that you don't even know. But the most important part is to know your resources, right? Your resources are people, right? So we're gonna look today at just basically what are the fundamentals of project management? What does it really entail? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, when I was at Dominican, I raised, I wouldn't say raised, I made $30,000 while I was in the program. This was a long, a while back, right? I raised $30,000. Um, I sold the textbooks to everybody for two years, right? So what I did was made some communication with some of the publishers of the textbooks, right? I was able to cut some deals to get a bunch of free ebooks and other books, paperback. Sell them at a discount to other students for two years, and I made 30 grand. Right? And with that 30 grand, it helped sort of launch me to do other things that I wanted to do. Right? Private equity, venture capital, things of that nature. So the point is that we always keep thinking about something a little bit different all the time. Right? So we say, hey, project management involves a framework. Right, your businesses that you're working on involves a framework, right? And it involves cycles. <clears throat> right, your project has a cycle. It has a beginning and it has an end. Right? Within those projects, Think of the cycles almost sort of like life in some sense, like life cycles. So we have life cycles, product uh, life cycles, we have business life cycles. What do cycles of life entail? Right? So we think we have uh, introduction, your ideas, right? then you have growth. You're going to be thinking of how to grow the project itself recognizing where it is mature, and knowing that it will decline at some point, and sort of die off or end. All right, within these cycles, we also have phases. <laughs> so where are you now with the phases of your businesses? You're in the planning stage of trying to initialize the different steps that are going to make you successful in some way. Some of those are very short term, some of those are long term. You may have different programs you need to be running within your business, but all together you're going to have sort of beginning and end to when things occur. All right, so we say a systemized phase approach to defining, organizing, planning, monitoring, and controlling your projects. Who are you going to get to manage it, right? Who are you going to get to control? Then we got our program, an interdependence of the projects that have a common strategic purpose. So what's the scope? Let me hear what do you expect to make in year one with your projects. What's the scope of year one for the bakery? What are you thinking about in terms of income? What's a rough estimate? 30, 30 grand. All right, so we got our bakery. Expects to make 30K. 
how much do you determine is going to cost you in year one to make the ferry trip? Um, the base cost I calculated was Most bakeries and most restaurants operate at a loss for the first year mm -hmm. before they actually get on their feet. Because it, it's from what I understand, I've done research into this, is the first year operates on a loss because they're trying to get their feet underneath them, and then once they find their processes and get it down to a science within the first year, close to the first year, 18 months, then they end up picking back up their losses. Gotcha. Because in the beginning, you don't have anything, you don't have the customer base. Right, so what could be done with the bakery is to see how feasible is it to make 30 grand um, and what could be done to make more than that, right? So maybe your project would also entail how could you improve that process at the beginning so that you can not lose 25 grand in year one. Who else? Who else has sort of a rough idea on what they expect to make in year one for their business? Yes. Um, I think for the housekeeping, if it was just me, it's like 40000 to 50000 All right, so we have our cleaning business. $40,000 or $50,000? Mm -hmm. I'll put it at $40,000. Yeah. <laughs> How much you determine do you think it's going to cost you to make forty five dollars in the first year? Mm -hmm. Really? For an entire year? I don't know. Think of all the products you have to use, the travel. Maybe like $10,000? $50,000? Right, $10,000. I say fifteen. dollars <laughs> right. Let's say fifteen dollars right? I mean, you have to think, hey, you haven't set up, so you'll be spending a lot of fuel, right? Gas is pretty expensive. The products, you don't necessarily know how much you're going to need for each change, but fifteen grand. So there's an expectation for a cleaning business to make 30 grand in the first year. Is that decent in your opinion? Mm. Right? You're kind of like, well, you know what? You can make more than that maybe because work my job, right? But maybe year two, it can be more successful. What about our pre workout? What's your expectations or anticipations on uh, how much you can make? Well, first of all, how much it's going to cost you to start this thing? Oh, uh, definitely. So you're thinking of netting about 55K in year one. Madam, what about your business? <laughs> it's a pretty big operation. The yeah. point of this is for you to get an idea of feasibility. You say, I have a great idea, but is it even feasible to
to do this thing, right? Like, is it feasible to be in this business knowing that potentially it's not going to yield certain results? So what could you do this in terms of feasibility to see how likely you would be successful in making a profit? Let's say you did a feasibility test. You tested, before you even actually physically started this business, what are some of the things you could test to see how feasible it would be to be successful? What could you look at? The doggy daycare, I think it's gonna cost about 75K. No, I'm, I'm being a bit too harsh. Um, now that I'll say it'll cost you 35k. Right. So okay. So we see that a few people are in the negative that year one already. Yes. Are the like make is that profit or is that total like value? Uh, that's the that's the net, right? Okay. All right. I don't know, maybe we could say it's all inclusive, we'll say it's profit. We could say it's taxes, insurance, yada, yada, yada. All right, make it simple for us, really simple. So we say, hey, profit, uh, our pre-workout is doing okay, right? Maybe 55K in the first year. Feasibility-wise, uh, it's feasible because you're just doing it all online, right? We say less risk because you don't have a big retail physical location, which is required. Uh, our cleaning company, not bad, right? 30K, our bakery, right? What did we determine? Uh, bakery and a daycare is, requires like a, a physical location with a bunch of people and a bunch of machines and items. It appears that retail or physical location is really hard to be profitable. Right? What could be altered to make profit here? Knowing that. What could you change about the entire operations, the entire business structure? Yeah. For mine anyway, um, start as an online retailer for it. Um, there, is a, there is something small with that, and it's cottage laws. Um, it's uh, laws pertaining to what you can and can't sell out of a home. Um, bread is protected under cottage law, mm -hmm. um, and that means you can sell bread out of a home mm -hmm. or out of another facility that is not an actual food okay. facility. Um, so operating online or out of a home might reduce the risk of a retail physical location. Mm -hmm. All right, so online retail. Go on. Malin, what could you do for doggy daycare that's unique or different that could create some sort of <coughs> more profit for yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think online is the best right now. I don't know if it's just online, but um, probably like uploading stuff, like, um, like how you said for like. I was doing the boarding, like they could upload pictures and like, um, like any medications that they have, like stuff like that. Like I know yeah. for us, like the doggy daycare that we go to, like for our dogs, like they don't have any of that, like mm -hmm. online portion where you could like let them know ahead of time um, before boarding them. Um, so I think making a change to that. All right, so we see that making things a little bit more automated automatically creates more value for us, all right? Because if not, you say, I have a ton of employees and they have to vet the dog to do all these things and it's very, very expensive. What about for our restraint? What are some of the um, costs that you expect that first year? So, yeah, if you ask me like this, I think it would, I mean, just ballpark, because like I have no clue what I'm talking about, yeah. I'd say like 200 grand like bare minimum that it'll cost yeah just because of like all the research and development and then like fees to like make it testing everything 
Now, pouring 200 grand into this initiative, what do you think will yield you? Like profit-wise, mm -hmm. I don't think, I think that you'd be like in the red off the first year at least, just because- well, like, How much do you think potentially you can make in sales, period? Preferably. Making sales? Like, I would be like, be like 500 a unit. I think we could easily sell like at least 1,500 of them the first year. Okay. So, one second. Let me know what that number is. I guess that would be a profit then. How much was it? 750000 All right. Right, so there actually is, um, that's looking pretty good for you. But $200,000, is it feasible? Um, like to get together that type of capital? Oh, I mean, you, could I, or like, could anyone? Probably, yeah. I don't know if, see that 1500 number of like, per like unit sales, like obviously that could like not happen. So I don't, I don't know if it would be or not. Yeah. Now for you personally, would you be able to raise that type of money? Yeah. You could raise $200,000 to start a business. Yeah. Excellent. Anyone else cannot raise this money in real life? What do you think, Madeline? Do you feel like you could raise 25K in real life? Is it feasible? Hallelujah. How about the baker? Right, something to consider. Because I, I really want you to think about doing this as a real life business. I really think you should be focusing on more on starting a business as opposed to just, you know, think about getting your job. So you're going to get a job when you graduate, right? But in the meantime, you still have a little bit more time to focus on these and raise some capital. Uh, and we'll try to figure out some more ways of how to do that besides just asking our parents and things like that. You know? <clears throat> All right, where are we at with... All right, so with risk management, we got to have a plan that identifies the key risk to a project success and prescribes ways to circumvent them, right? So we need to be focused on <clears throat> what is the most riskiest part of our operations, right? And how we can mitigate those risks. So let's throw out some ideas for our projects. What is the most riskiest part For your pre-workout, right? We're thinking of risk management. In your operations, what has the most risk? risk because people are ingesting this concoction, right? So your risks are lawsuits, right? Or people potentially getting sick. And why is that? Because you have a unique sort of mixture of product? I guess so. We say the higher risk, the higher the reward. What about for our cleaning company? What's the highest risk in this sort of uh, process? Um, maybe like 
like something happening in the home where it's like like a damage to the home or put in play or something? So property damage. What could you do to mitigate that risk? To kind of lower the risk of that. Maybe just like depending on the, the products that are being used, like maybe certain products are safe or I mean is it the products or is it the people that's working for you? Well, I guess both, yeah, so then maybe like training. Okay. So we say training. Because if your biggest risk is damaging people's property, you probably as the owner are very critical to how it is. So training. What about for the bakery? What is your highest risk in your process? The biggest risk would be entering the room to open the space. Why is that the biggest? Because everything else, okay, if word doesn't sell, get rid of it. If a just take off the menu, if bread doesn't sell, okay, fine. But getting into an actual retail location, you don't make the rent. That's a black mark on credit. Gotcha. That's you know that's that's something that can actually hurt any future business endeavors because then creditors and other people say, oh well, you know they defaulted on loans or they, you know, didn't pay their rent in time. No. Your biggest risk is that you pick a fixed location that you can't just change overnight. Right? And if you pick the wrong location where it doesn't meet that demand, you most likely have to close the door. Right? Kind of like any other restaurant. You know, the restaurants are very uh, difficult to run, right? Because usually location is a big factor. Uh, now, is the same for you? Is it location or is it something else? What's your biggest risk in this process? I would say like liability, just like you're taking care of like people's dogs safety was like coming in. So if there was ever like a dog fight, like that that would be like a risk. Yeah. Let's say harming dogs or potentially people being harmed as well too. Yeah. And how do you go about sort of lowering the risk for that? There's a lot of training um, with our employees on knowing how to do all right, so training, is there anything else? Is there any way that you can kind of create spaces where dogs don't necessarily well, yeah. I would interact? think, like, with the dogs that we're going to take, um, obviously they would have to have um, some training done before coming to our facility. Um, but knowing to separate the dogs that, you know, do kind of thing. And do you feel that your model for your businesses are a strategic fit? Do you feel like what you're doing fits the outcomes that you are trying to achieve? Yes? So that's risk management. It's trying to understand, hey, do we meet the strategic fit of the demand of our outcomes, what we're trying to achieve? We're also looking at service and product attributes, right? Are we providing the type of service that's actually needed? Is this overdone already, right? Is this too sort of normal? Is there nothing unique about what we do? Just think about the business that you say, is there any uniqueness at all to what you do, right? And if not, is the market or service of what you in usually close their doors after a certain amount of time? Because you're not doing anything unique as an attribute. Either being your product, you say, hey, we do something completely different in terms of providing a product or a service. <clears throat> uh, project team capabilities, a lot of times, um, I've heard that most people are just doing them on their own. So it's a little bit difficult if you're talking about the capabilities, if you're just doing it by yourself, only one person, you may need to change that, right? Also that. I don't necessarily think it's a good strategy to say it's just you, right? Because it usually that doesn't mean that you're able to do everything on your own. And then last is our operations, right? What are all the processes involved in between these risk analyses? All right, now with statistical analysis, we won't get too complicated on it, but uh, it's not just time, but it's 
all sorts of things, right?